Hello friends, welcome friends, welcome back to Prosthe Hub and myself, Dr. Jolsna. So today I have come with a session exclusively for the final year exam going BDS students and here I am going to solve out the final year BDS part 2 degree exam of Kuhas University which was asked in May 2021. So in this Prosthe paper I shall be focusing on the short notes. So you can see that there are 10 short notes that was asked for 4 marks each. So without any delay, let's get into the topic. The first one, the indirect retainer. So under the topic indirect retainer, you have to include the definitions, the principle of indirect retainer, factors affecting the effectiveness of indirect retainer, functions and types. And wherever required, you have to draw the diagrams and that is a must. So before getting into indirect retainer, let us see some of the basic ideas that is what is a retainer and the classification of retainer. You can just mention in uh, these in your answer sheet, but there is no need for expanding. So what is a retainer? Any type of device that is used for stabilization or retention of a processes. So retainer is any type of device that is used to stabilize or retain a processes which prevents the dislodgement. And retainer as you know it is divided into two the direct retainer and the indirect retainer coming to the definition of direct retainer it is that component of a partial removable dental prosthesis used to retain and prevent dislodgement consisting of a clasp assembly or precision attachment so it is the direct retainer uh, that retains and prevents dislodgement and it is classified into intracoronal as well as extracoronal retainers. Intracoronal retainer include the precision attachment and extracoronal include the clasp assembly. So here I am not going into detail of the direct retainer as this is not our topic of concern. We have to go in detail of indirect retainer. So if you need you can just mention the classification that is retainers are classified into direct and indirect direct is classified into intracoronal and extracoronal just that much is necessary no need to expand the direct retainer portion now getting into our topic that is the indirect retainer which is defined as that component of a removable partial danger that assists direct retainer in preventing displacement of the distal extension danger base by functioning through the liver action on the opposite side of the fulcrum line when the danger base attempts to move away from the tissues in pure rotation around the fulcrum line. So this is the GPT definition and you have to memorize this and it is quite lengthy one. So in order to memorize this you just have to split these points. So to remember these points just remember these questions that is what that is what is an indirect retainer how is it functioning where is it located and when is it functioning now let us see the definition again so what what is indirect retainer it is that component of a removable partial danger that assists direct retainer to prevent displacement how that is by liver action and where it is located on the opposite side of the fulcrum line and when that is when the danger base attempts to move away from the tissue. So if you can memorize these four and you need to memorize the points then you will get the definition. So to know more in detail of indirect retainer and to know the concept you need to know the various forces acting on the danger and what is a fulcrum line and how is it the indirect retainer is acting. So let us get into that. So now whenever there is a force acting on a danger it leads to movement of the prosthesis and this movement can be towards the tissue. The prosthesis can move away from the tissue and it can move in a buccolingual direction. So whenever this movement occurs there is a chance that the danger tends to rotate around an axis and this axis of rotation is called as the fulcrum line. So this is defined as the imaginary line around which the partial danger tends to rotate. And now how we determine the fulcrum? It is the line joining the two posterior most rest. So in this figure you can see that the line joining the two posterior most rest. This is the fulcrum. So this is a case of class 2 uh, distal extension, removal partial danger. And so the indirect retainer usually take the form of rest on the opposite side of the fulcrum line. So this is the indirect retainer. The line that is connecting the two posterior most rest that is the fulcrum now 
the most of the tooth bone partial denture do not exhibit rotational movement why because they have got extensive tooth support but in case of class 3 or class 4 partial denture which has got mobile abutment that can exhibit rotational movement and indirect retainer is useful in such cases and where is the indirect retainer located so we know that the indirect retainer should be placed as far as possible from the distal extension danger base why because this is the best position where it can get the best possible leverage advantage which prevents the lifting up of the distal extension base so here in this case you can see that the indirect retainer is placed at the farthest position so normally the farthest position is the vicinity of the incisor tooth but due to two reasons you cannot place the indirect retainer on the incisors one is the incisors are not strong enough to support an indirect retainer and the next one is they have got steep lingual inclines and it cannot be favorably altered in order to support a rest so because of these two reasons we cannot place the indirect retainer on the incisors so the next option is the nearest canine or the mesial occlusal surface of the first premolar so here you can see that the rest is placed on the uh, canine and the mesial occlusal surface of the first premolar so this is the best possible location for an indirect retainer which is the farthest position from the fulcrum line next is the principle of indirect retainer so in order to know about the principle of indirect retainer we have to first know about the liver action which we have already mentioned in the definition of indirect retainer so what is a liver a liver is a, a long bar which has got a single support around which rotation happens when a load is applied to any of its end so in removable partial denture there are two types of livers that is acting first order liver and second order liver so in the figure 1 you can see the first order liver so here the fulcrum lies in the center and uh, the resistance or the load is at the one end and the effort lies at the other end so this is the first class liver and in second class liver the fulcrum will be at one end effort on the other end with the resistance or load in the center so the same scenario in a distal extension partial danger without an indirect retainer that is will be a first class liver so here the fulcrum is in the center which is the direct retainer and then when there is an effort here the posterior part of the danger tends to lift up so this is the first class liver now what happens when an indirect retainer is added the first class liver gets converted to second class liver so where is what is second class liver the fulcrum is at one end so the fulcrum will be the indirect retainer and when there is a load that is in the center and this uh, end will be the effort so when you add an indirect retainer the first order liver gets converted to second order liver and that is more beneficial for the processes because it prevents the uh, liver action so the danger does not lift up that easily so let us see in this figure where you can understand more easily so this is a single bar which has got a fulcrum in the center and here free rotation happens so when there is a force on one end the other end tends to lift up so this is the first order liver now when you add an another support to the same bar as you can see here so we have added another support to the same bar now this bar cannot be easily lifted up because the support the second support which we have added will prevent the downward movement of the bar and now we need additional force for the displacement of this bar so this is the same case that is the second support has indirectly improved the retention of this bar so the support is away from the effort and this support will act as the fulcrum so the fulcrum which was in the middle is shifted anteriorly so in the first case it was a direct retainer which acted as the fulcrum whereas in the second that is a second order liver it is an indirect retainer which is acting as a fulcrum so the fulcrum basically is shifted anteriorly and this will prevent the displacement of the danger so this is the basic principle of indirect retainer 
So now we know that providing an additional support away from the fulcrum line in the form of an occlusal rest can prevent the rotation of the danger and this is the basic mechanism of an indirect retainer. Now coming to the factors influencing the effectiveness of indirect retainer. There are four factors. The first one proper seating of the danger. So the principal occlusal rest should be seated properly that is in the direct retainer. The once the direct retainer is placed properly then only indirect retainer can act efficiently to prevent lifting of the distal extension base. So that is the first factor is proper seating of the danger. The second one distance from the fulcrum line we have already discussed this that is the indirect retainer should be as far away as possible from the fulcrum line for the efficient functioning. The third factor is rigidity of the connectors that are supporting the indirect retainer. So all connectors must be rigid if the indirect retainer has to function as intended. So the connectors must be rigid. And finally effectiveness of the supporting tooth surface that is the indirect retainer should be placed on a definite rest seat. That means a tooth which is uh, not having any movement or not having any steep inclines. So the uh, teeth that is with steep inclines and weak teeth should never be used for the support of indirect retainer and this is the reason why we do not select the incisor teeth for taking as an indirect retainer. So these are the factors influencing the effectiveness of indirect retainer. Next coming to the functions of indirect retainer. So apart from preventing the movement of a distal extension danger base away from tissue, indirect retainer has got some other functions also. First one, it tends to reduce the torquing leverages on principal abutment. This is especially important when a uh, isolated tooth is being used as an abutment. So indirect retainer reduces the torquing leverages on such abutments. The next one, it aids in stabilization against horizontal movement of the danger. This is through the uh, contact of the indirect retainer's minor connector with the vertical tooth surface. So when there is a contact of indirect retainer's minor connector with that of the uh, vertical tooth surface, it aids in stabilization against the horizontal movement of the danger. Okay. Then the next one is anterior teeth with indirect retainers are supported against the lingual movement. So when uh, you use an uh, indirect retainer on anterior teeth, the anterior teeth uh, can be splinted and protected against the lingual movement. The final one, it acts as an auxiliary rest to support a portion of the major connector. For example, a lingual bar. A lingual bar can be supported against settling into the tissues by means of an indirect retainer. So these are the other functions of indirect retainer. Finally, let us see the types of indirect retainer. So they are auxiliary occlusal rest canine or cingulum rest, canine extensions from occlusal rest, cingulum bar and lingo plates, rugae support and major connector. So let us see one by one. The first one auxiliary occlusal rest which is the most frequently used one and it is usually located on the mesial marginal ridge of the first premolar. So we know that the indirect retainer should be as far as possible from the fulcrum line. So this is placed uh, on the perpendicular line that is drawn from the midpoint of the fulcrum line. So if it comes on the incisor we have to avoid it. Why? Because the incisors are uh, usually not that strong and they have got steep inclines. We cannot prepare the rest seat and uh, it can also cause interference to the tongue also. So here the mesial marginal ridge of the first premolar is taken and uh, this is also uh, indicated when there is inadequate cingulum tooth structure on the canines. So this is about auxiliary occlusal rest. Next one is the canine rest. So this is indicated when the mesial marginal ridge of the first premolar is close to the fulcrum line. And we know that among the anteriors, canine is the uh, most commonly used, used anterior teeth for preparation of a rest seat for the indirect retainer. So this is about canine rest. Next is the canine extensions from occlusal rest. So in some cases, we have to use a finger like extension which is called as a lug seat from the premolar rest on to the lingual slope of the adjacent canine. So this is a finger like extension from the 
premolar to the lingual slope of the canine and it's called as lug seat and this is indicated when first premolar should also act as a primary abutment that is it should give direct support to the fixed or the removable dental processes that means it is the primary abutment so when we have to use the first premolar as a primary abutment also we have to provide the canine extension from the occlusal rest and this design avoids a tipping action produced in a single cingulum canine rest so this is about canine extension from occlusal rest next the continuous bar retainers and lingual plates technically these are not indirect retainers because they rest on unprepared lingual inclines of the anterior teeth but the actual indirect retainers here are the terminal rest on either end it can be an auxiliary occlusal rest or the canine rest so the continuous bar retainers and lingual plates which are actually given to stabilize the weak anterior teeth provide indirect retention when they have a terminal rest and one more thing you have to take care is that in such cases these should never be placed above the uh, middle third of the teeth because it can cause orthodontic movement during the rotation of the distal extension danger so uh, this continuous bar retainers and lingual plates should never be placed above the middle third of the teeth so this is about continuous bar retainers and lingual plates now the last one rugae support and indirect retention from major connector so as the rugae area is uh, firm and well placed it can be used for indirect retention especially in case of a palatal hose shoe major connector so in a palatal hose shoe major connector it lacks adequate posterior retention and so the rugae support can be used as an indirect retainer now coming to indirect retention from major connector so we have already discussed in the factors influencing the effectiveness of uh, the indirect retainer that is rigidity of connector so the major connector also provides indirect retention because of its rigidity and some of the major connector retainer extend over two or three planes and they produce the l beam effect which further helps to improve the indirect retention if you want to know further about l beam effect do comment below this video so these were the different types of indirect retainer so let us have a recap first you have to include the definition and if possible include the classification of direct retainer then comes to the principle of indirect retainer and the factors affecting the five factors affecting the effectiveness of indirect retainer the major function other than the primary function and the different types of or forms of indirect retainer that is the auxiliary occlusal rest canine rest canine extension then the rugae support and major connector and also the um, continuous bar retainers and lingual plates thus we have come to the end of the session thank you all for watching my video please do like and share my videos if you are finding them useful if you are new to this channel prosa hub please do subscribe and if you have any queries any topic suggestion do comment below the video or you can mail me at this mail id So thanks you all once again